It's Laura Coleman Wait. We're about to do the play along with Laura. We're going to do a full length exercise video. So I just turned on my timer for a minute and a half. I'm a big fan of 90 seconds. You're going to bring your weights up and our first exercise is bench press or chest press. So you're going to bring your arms straight up. You can touch the weights at the top. If you don't have weights, you can use a kettlebell. You could use a small child. You could use a puppy. You can let go of your weights completely and create your own resistance without having a single weight in your hand. You don't actually have weights in your hands. You are just slowing down and pretending the air is pushing down onto your hands. That works like a charm too. As you come back down, feel the shoulder blades on the roller. That's one of the beautiful parts about being on the roller, is that you can feel what your shoulder blades are up to. Now, people will say, do I put my hands here? 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 I say, you use your arms in all of those positions, so feel free to put them anywhere you want and change it, because you use your arms in multiple vectors, and you want to be strong in multiple vectors. So that's there's not a right or wrong way to do this. You just wanna make sure that you feel those pecs, chest muscles on the way up, and you feel the shoulder blades grab onto the roller on the way back down. It's your basic bench press motion. I happen to have 10 pound weights in my hands. There's our minute and a half beep, and let's take a rest. Our next lower body exercise is going to be the shoulder bridge. So you're gonna drive through your heels, and you're gonna lift your hips up in the air, and we're gonna hit that minute and a half timer. The minute and a half timer you can use because 90 seconds is a neural learning point, meaning that the nerves from your brain go down to the muscles and they're able to <coughs> release and they're also learning this neural pathway that you're engaging because this is a brain workout as much as it is an actual muscle workout. So I've got my weight on my heels. That helps me really dig into those glutes. If you wear super cushy running shoes, you might have a harder time digging into your heels at home. So you might take those babies off and just work out in your socks or work out just in your bare feet. That will help you dig into your heels a little bit more. So the other thing you wanna pay attention to is, is the weight equal from right to left? Can you feel the right glute as much as the left glute and vice versa? You should also be getting a lot of hamstring in this. So we want those hamstrings to work equally. Two glutes, two hamstrings, no low back. If you're feeling your low back, bring your hips down a little bit and see if that takes your low back out of it or you can do snake breathing. Teeth together, tongue up against the back of your teeth and make a hissing noise through your teeth. It's a kettlebell trick to help stabilize your core and takes the workload out of your back. So that should give you some core. We're working on five seconds here at those shoulder bridges. Those glutes and hamstrings should be lighting up. There's our beep, and we're down. Back on the roll. Next upper body exercise is pullover for your back. Pullovers are similar to pull downs or pull ups. They're all meant to engage that lat muscle, which takes up the lower two thirds of your back. So you're gonna bring both weights up over your head, keeping your arms straight. You're gonna take the weights all the way down until you feel them touch the ground behind you. If your shoulders don't like that, only take it as far as your shoulders wanna go. And then you can use your snake breathe. So teeth together, tongue up against the back of your teeth, exhale through your teeth to come back over. Now it might be that two weights is too much, kick one to the curb, no problem. So then you're just hanging on to the weight like this and you're letting it come all the way over and you come back over your chest back and forth and you're thinking about engaging your core and or engaging your back muscles hopefully your shoulders are cooperating most people feel like it feels like a really nice stretch if your shoulder gets mad then don't go as far that's easy to modify or again Kick those weights to the curb. Just use resistance. Just pretend someone's pushing on your hands on the way back because you do not need to have weights to create resistance. And come back forward. That's easily accomplished. Oh, and there's your beep. So there's your minute and a half. Rest from that. Okay, now we're ready for another lower body exercise. We're gonna do march in place to help those hamstrings. So you go up into your shoulder ridge that we started with 
And then all you're going to do is pick one foot up, put the other one down, pick one foot up, put the other one down, and the focus is on the glute and the hamstring of the leg that's on the ground. It should really ramp it up. It shouldn't go anywhere but the glute and hamstring. So again, if it makes your back mad, then keep your hips down on the roll and try it that way. Just shifting weight and pushing down into the ground, going side to side. <coughs> if it's too much, then just go up and hold this shoulder bridge instead of lifting one foot up and down. That also works. But you're really, really, really trying your best to give one side of your body the opportunity to stabilize for the other, just like it does when you go for a walk. So we're hoping that these exercises that you do on the roll translate to your movement pattern. That's our big challenge here. Can you feel your glutes? Can you feel your hamstrings when you go for your walk? Out in the neighborhood or for a run or just making sure that the workload doesn't switch into your back because if it jumps into your back, then you're using your back. It's not that it's wrong. It's just that that muscle is getting super strong. So we have six seconds left to go. Hang in there. Keep breathing. And there's a big down. It's funny how there's a car that goes by about every minute and a half. Okay, let's ready for, we're ready for the next upper body exercise, elbow curls. So you're gonna bring your weights up. You're gonna bring them up to your temple. And you're gonna bring your elbows together and apart. Now, this may be a little bit tough to do, hanging on to your weights, and let me sit up and demonstrate it. So your knuckles are to your temples, and your elbows together and apart, and together and apart, and your focus is your shoulders. You can let go of your weights easily, have your knuckles on your temples, bring your elbows together, let your knuckles roll on your temples, and then bring your elbows apart. And the goal will be to get your elbows all the way onto the floor. So I'll try it and continue without the weights. <clears throat> and again, you're focusing on what your shoulder blades are up to. Because yes, you'll feel it in the shoulders, but you wanna try and get those elbows down as far as possible. And it feels like my left one is getting down and I would have to cheat and get over here to get my right side down. So work on the biggest range of motion there's our beep. We're going to take a rest and go on to the next lower body. Okay, so now let's work on some core a little bit. You're going to bring your knees together. You're going to use your weights on the ground as anchors because you're going to try really hard to keep your shoulder blades together on the roll. And you're going to bring your knees in a reverse crunch up and back. So you're exhaling as your knees come back with your snake breathe. And you're trying very hard to use your hip flexors equally on both sides also. So that hopefully should keep the workload in the front of the body, in the stomach muscles, and also in the hips. So again, the low back doesn't get mad because we're trying our best to keep the workload out of the low back and make sure the muscles of the hips and the core, front of the back, or front of the stomach, work and take the workload out of the low back. Lots of people have low back soreness it's mostly because those hip muscles, in my opinion, aren't working as well as they could. So let's give them the opportunity to work. So a minute and a half to create that neural learning. Do your best to keep your shoulders relaxed. I'm using my weights here on the ground as an anchor. And let's see, did I remember to turn on my watch. Everybody always accuses me of not turning on my watch. We've got 12 seconds left. <laughs> so you're gonna bring those knees back and reverse crunch, and reverse crunch, and reverse crunch, and there's your beat. Just started the clock, now we're gonna do some bicep curls. So please keep your shoulders back, hang on to those weights. If you don't have weights, you can very slowly create resistance all by yourself, and then very slowly bring that arm back down. But if you do have weights, please keep your shoulders back, use that roller to anchor the, um, shoulder blade onto, keep your elbows down, and just do a little bicep curl up and down. It's not a huge range of motion, and you can certainly do these standing up instead, but lying here on the roll lets that shoulder open out and back, and if you're on your computer all day, 
you need a lot of that direction rather than more things that pull you forward. You can also add a little twist at the top because the bicep is named the bicep because it has two points of attachment in the muscle and it does well when you give both attachment points of the muscle the opportunity to work. So if you're twisting the weights, great. If you're not, great. Or you can alternate every time. You can do one arm at a time, one arm at a time, whatever you'd like to do to stay entertained for your full 90 seconds. That creates that neural learning. We're teaching both biceps to work at the same time. For the final upper body exercise this is for your triceps so I'm gonna turn on my timer and I'm gonna bring the palm right by the ear I'm gonna put my hand on the back side of my elbow and I'm gonna do a little half twist on the way up and then on the way back down because remember the tricep is three muscles and three muscles control the rotational component of the elbow so I'm gonna do maybe four or five tricep exercises on this side and then I'm going to switch arms back and forth for the minute and a half. Triceps tend to be not quite as strong as biceps so you have to give them a little bit more rest and a little bit more love. So I'm just doing that same little half twist. You can of course do just straight up and down. You could do some skull crushers this way but no matter what you want to feel that tricep. So if you just have one weight and it's super heavy, try it this way. Remember, you don't need a weight at all. You can just create your own resistance as you come up to get that tricep to work. But you really want to feel it on the back of the arm. Try and keep that shoulder blade anchored into the roll. And we're gonna be coming up on that minute and a half very soon. I'm just switching back and forth, working both sides, making sure that that tricep is really the only thing that I can feel. Perfect, you're doing awesome. How does it feel? You've gotten five upper body exercises done and there's your beat. Okay, we are done with upper body, woohoo. Last exercise, you're almost there. So we're gonna draw the alphabet with one leg and then the other. So you're gonna straighten your left leg, you're gonna pull your toes back on your left leg, tighten that left quad, Pick that left leg halfway up the right knee, turn it out, and then start drawing your alphabet. Everybody always asks me, capital letters or small letters? That's your choice. Other people ask me, what alphabet are we doing? The Hawaiian alphabet only has 14 letters, I think. We can do um, some additional umlauts. We can do some enyes for Spanish, but you're gonna be sure and do both sides. So. Right leg now, straighten that leg, pull your toes back, tighten that quad, pick that leg up, and draw your A, and your B, and your C, and your D. What I've noticed with the alphabet is most people get about halfway through with one leg, and then they need to switch and do the other side. This is definitely for that hip flexor, and we're moving that hip flexor in as many directions, that leg, using the hip flexor, in as many directions as possible to work on the multiple directions that the hip can go. <clears throat> Not just up and down, but out to the side and rotating all the directions that the hip can go. Okay, congratulations. You have finished five upper body, five lower body on the roll. You're at home, no big deal. Now you've completed your workout and you can get on with your day. Good job today, super proud of you. Keep up the good work. This is Laura Coleman-Waite with Just Muscles. Here's to balance, strength, and happiness, and we'll see you next time.